imagine they just went out of there. Well, what, what's that? And I've forgotten her name with the water bottle. Is she still there roaming around, keeping watch over she somebody? She is, and she has uh, somebody to take care of that Miss Bynog, you know, that swept so much. Yeah. Fell and broke her hip, and she's in a wheelchair. So Miss Cook has put herself in charge mm. of Miss Bynog. Oh, yeah. But, Mark, I went down there the other day. That was the day I was there, and the sweetest, that sweet little lady that always seemed to want us to hug her, her face was battered up. Mm. And I'm thinking, I, they probably do fall. Yeah. I don't know. And, of course, they can't tell you a word. Mm-mm. But you don't know what happens to them. It, what story she told about seeing a shadow on the other side of that curtain and you coming know, out with that bottle and yeah. whamming them in the head. You know that um, that they're really on to the nursing homes now just simply for abuse. Yeah. Right. It could be a worker doing And they that. won't let a man work in that back. Well, Charlotte, that is the same workers that was there the, since the evening we took her. And... Uh, I had to pick out one of them that I thought would mistreat somebody. I couldn't do it. Yeah. I'd rather, I'd more or less think a patient. Mm-hmm. But anyway, you know, I, I, I don't have no choice. Mm-hmm. I even thought about getting her and bringing her, of course, have to have to have help, bringing her here for a little while during the holidays. Yeah. And I, and I may consider that further, but um, it, the getting her back would be. It, well, yeah. She wouldn't want be very traumatic. Mm-mm. And she seems satisfied. Yeah. That's her friends, she calls them. She mm-hmm. uh, rolled her eyes at me the other evening and said, I was busy seeing about her shoes. And she said, well, aren't you going to speak to anybody? <laughs> <laughs> it's like that cartoon. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, that dog. Remember your old manners. Go smell the Henderson's butts. <laughs> well, <clears throat> well, I'm glad she's doing okay. She really is. And physically, seems like she just it can't be beat. And we went down there, was it Thanksgiving? Uh, yeah, for uh, Thanksgiving dinner with them. And I thought she ate good. She ate her dessert first. Mm-hmm. That's all right. I didn't say a word, and of course they had that set out on the tables, and then we had to wait, so she ate it. She ate all of that, and she ate all her turkey and dressing. Mm-hmm. So I thought that was a darn, pretty darn good meal. Yeah, yeah. Well, um... As far as I know, aside from laying all the sad stuff on y'all, everybody's getting along okay. Well, that's good. I think. It's so good to hear from y'all, though. Because yesterday I thought, you don't even know if they got that. Yeah, we did. Oh, I'm so glad. <clears throat> and should have called sooner. Mm-hmm. But I did. No, that was my place to call. And and you know what I do? I'm going to call tonight. I'm going to call tonight. That's what I do about Glenn. Mm. I'm going to call tonight. And before I know it, it's bedtime. Yeah. Well. I told somebody, I said, the only time I punch the phone is a more or less a business call. I have to do. Yeah. Otherwise, I wouldn't be doing it. Mm-hmm. But I thank God people call and check on me, though. I'm just not that good a neighbor. Well, you are. You just got so much to do. We're well, so slow. But I made the pharmacist laugh yesterday. They asked me how I was, and I said, well, I'm trying to persevere because I read where perseverance got the snail to the ark. Mm-hmm. So I said, I may be as slow as a snail, but I'm trying to get to the ark. Mm-hmm. That's right. What was your dog's name? She Was, was it Miss Annie when she was Annie. White? Annie. I still see her. Plain as day. With a, looked like she had an eyeliner around. Well, I've got a picture of her. You're kidding. No. I'm going to send it. Send oh, I can, I can still... Uh, the, every dog I ever had, I can understand the Essie, a lot of it, but they have a place in your heart, and it's just like that, uh, the one that Jean loves so much that was so cuckoo, Tammy Faye. Mm. 
leaping like a deer out across that back. And, you know, <laughs> she starved to death when Pug died. Mm-hmm. She died three weeks later. Never would drink. Their eyes locked. She went to over on the other side of his bed. She never um, drank another drop of water, never ate another bite of food. Me and Jean and Randy would go in there, and I said, I'm, you're going to stand up or I'm going to kill you. Mm. And she was dead in three weeks. Mm. I told the doctor, I said, it, I took her on up to the vet. I said, uh, I believe it's grief. And he said, oh, no, uh-uh. About three days later, he called me and said, you know, after observing what I have and uh, then what you told me, I've come to the same conclusion. He said, we've tried to drop feed her mm. everything in the world. Hmm. Well. Didn't want any part of it. No. No, I think it was one year I came to visit probably 85 or 86 and y'all don't think y'all been in in your house there if it, we moved in here in October of 84 and uh, got a picture of you and Alan and Uncle Gene and and, and Craig and we have or Chase Chase and, and we he, had Sam the little black dog I believe and he turned blind and I, of course and I didn't recognize it till I saw her herding him Oh, I didn't know he was blind. I got to watching Annie, and she would get beside him uh, at the glass door when I'd open it, mm-hmm. and herd him out, and then herd him back in. That's mm-hmm. something. Yeah. And I realized he's blind, and I asked him, couldn't they operate? And the doctor said, oh, no. He said, they do that in New Orleans. But it's not successful. Said how would how would they take care of it? Mm. Well, but y'all are sitting on the fireplace. I'd love to have that, Mark. And another one of the dogs. I one dreamed of- night before last that Randy would always lay in his couch, and his hair would be at this end. Yeah, and that's how. Uh, Tammy couldn't get acquainted with him but she would sneak up you know she was afraid of everybody Mm -hmm. I think she had something wild in her but she would sneak up behind him and smell his hair and not touch him well he he would know it Mm -hmm. yeah you can feel somebody and uh, he never he never would raise up or turn around but he started getting treats and when, when he'd feel her there he'd reach a hand back with a treat he never did force her mm-hmm. but oh she loved him the night before last he was laying there and I walked by and rubbed in his hair it was just as real yeah as it could be seems like I can still feel his hair and see that may be crazy but that's mm-hmm. all precious to me yeah Absolutely. yeah I wake up in the morning and I say, I'll, I'll go in there and ask Gene what he thinks. Yeah. I think that means they're here with me. Mm-hmm. Well, they are. And I don't, I mean that in a sane sense. Well, yes. Yeah. Well, where did y'all, how did Tammy Faye end up there? She was so scared of people. I've, I've, I was working for Islam and I went to I was going up Hearn on my way back from lunch somewhere and saw her in the middle of the Hearn and it was at the Hearn and uh, Kings Highway mm-hmm. intersection. Yeah. And I just stopped. And it was during the lunch rush, big 18 wheelers and everything, and I just stopped, opened, left my door open and just jumped out and picked her up. And a man from the and she was, she'd fit in my hands. Hmm. I just saw a little ball. And she, uh, a man from the service station there came running. And she had a big, big fish hook in her mouth. Mm. And he uh, ran up there and said, look, 
she's got a fish hook in her mouth and went to pull it out. I said, oh, no, no. And I looked up, and there was a vet sign between mm. there and Greenwood Road. Mm. So I just put her in the car. And what they told me was that somebody uh, put out a mama and all her puppies. Mm. And they just scattered. And uh, most inhumane mm. thing that I ever saw in my life, I don't believe that the fish hook was an accident. No, that was on purpose. And uh, maybe had had her hung up somewhere. But mm -hmm. I took her up there, took her in the vet, and laid her on the counter, told him what I'd found, and I said, can you get that out? And he said, yeah, but I, she'd have to be put to sleep. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, I work right over here. That must have been 1 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Work right over here across the road on Virginia. And he said, well, I'll close at 5. I said, I'll be here. I went about 15 to 5 and got her and took a box from Islam's, put mm -hmm. her in the box, pushed her up under the my desk, mm -hmm. and she cried all evening long until mm -hmm. till I got off. And I thought, I cannot, cannot go in there with this puppy Jean will kill me. <laughs> $28 right off the reel, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, so that's not put, bad. No, not well. It well, was, back then it was. It, it, ooh, but now it would be 120. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Anyway, uh, I put her in the seat right up next to me in that old wagon. And I didn't want to leave her in there, but I had to because I didn't have no, what did I want, puppy food? Mm -hmm. And I don't think I had any canned food at all, probably just dry food. But anyway, I wanted puppy food. So I rushed in there, got that, and back out to the car, and I come in. Gene was frying fish at the stove. And I eased in. You know, he'd always used to get after me about my dogs, <laughs> having too many and feeding all the stray. Mm -hmm. I eased in with that in my arms. And when he turned around and looked, you know, I said, Lord, only knows. I think there was other people here. You know, that was his love. Hmm. But we'd see her, if this house filled up with company, she'd go lay out at that back fence and have a rigor. Hmm. Just like a seizure, scared to death. Yeah. She was... He thought come. she was mixed with something wild, but I never have known. I know that she ran different than any dog I ever saw. She galloped like a horse. Hmm. Well... She's probably so traumatized when she was a puppy, too. It, it, it well, of, can you imagine that? She just, she never did get used to people. Mm. And at night now, when it was just us, boy, did she come out and sprawl out. Hmm. But just you and Uncle Jane and are the only ones? And, and well, then Randy. Yeah. Loved Alan. Alan lived with us, you know. Mm -hmm. Loved me and Jean and Alan. Everybody left, and we'd get by ourselves. Here come Tammy, hmm. and that would tickle Jean. Yeah. Hmm. And she'd go to his chair for him to take his foot and rub up under her stomach. Yeah. Hmm. Well. So no. We got, to, we got to enjoy them a long time. Yeah. But that had, we lost those two uh, in December, just before Christmas. And what a Christmas. Yeah. The vet called me. He felt so sorry for us. He called me about Andy. This little dog is chewed up. She belongs to Dr. Danita Danford. She's got about eight dogs out there at Stonewall, but a German Shepherd shoot mm. him up good. Mm. And she says she's got to get rid of one of them. And if she has to have one put down, it would be the German Shepherd. But I just told her maybe that you'd like to try this dog out. I said, now if you don't like it, you bring him back. Well, he had no hair. It was all shaved off, you know. Mm. But you know how the rest of the story. <laughs> he don't take his eyes off of me. <laughs> most loyal little faithful dog yeah I think they appreciate what 
They know. They appreciate love. Yeah. Well, they can tell it. They're just very perceptive. Hetty was in there. She's an outside dog and not very intelligent, but she was in there, or she'd start barking at like 6.30 in the morning or trying to get me to get up. Mm. You know, Andy, I told, uh, told everybody if they needed help, Andy was a counselor. <laughs> you know, he would he went down there and broke her. Mm. Now, she may have been barking for him. Yeah. But whatever happened, she don't do that. Mm. He, he'd get up from my room and go down there and ended that. And where was she, outside? I'd be in the kitchen. Oh. Oh, want somebody to well, come well, feed yeah, her or something. Yeah, want me to get up. <laughs> just stand there and bark, and he put an end to that. <laughs> People don't believe me, but that's the God's <laughs> will. I believe it. <laughs> may have only been barking for him. Yeah, he may have nipped her or something to make her <laughs> shut up. Anyway, he stopped her. I said, he's a good doctor. <laughs> he stopped that. And they're just this thick close as they can be. Yeah. I'd like to have a little dog, but I... No, Charlotte. I wouldn't recommend it, baby. <laughs> you know, I just... A, a hands full of dog hair here. Yeah. That's not all that good for us. No. But I've got these two. And but I couldn't leave one outside all the no, time. No, ma'am. And when uh, Hetty come up out here, she couldn't stand up to eat. Mm. She laid down to eat the first mm -hmm. plate that I shoved up under that wagon. She's scared to come out. Mm. She was sitting over here at the side of the house and she dug a hole. Mm. Just, Jean, it was hot. I'd take her food and water out there. I was scared to let her in on count of Jean. Mm -hmm. One day he said, what are you planning to do with that dog? <laughs> and I said, well, I don't know. She's not bothering nothing out there. He said, winter's coming, and it's too cold, going to be too cold. And I saw him lay down on the floor inside that living room door for an hour hmm. with treats till he finally got her in the house. Hmm. So that was his dog. Yeah. Well, which one is the black one? That's Pug. That's, wait a minute. Pug died. That's Andy. Andy. Okay. And the, wait. That's the black and brown. The little sheep dog, shepherd dog. Doctor called her him a little shepherd, but uh, Hetty is the black, black, coal black. Yeah, yeah. I can't, I can't see her in the house. Fall over if you mm. don't have good lighting. Yeah, you don't have a nothing on her. Solid mm -hmm. black. That's the reason I named her Hetty Lamar. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that was the blackest haired woman that ever here ever hit Hollywood. Oh, I'm sure it was Di. I don't know. It was. She never changed it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that was so popular, Dorothy Lamore and Hedy Lamar. <laughs> have dark hair. Black. Black. I see who Essie tried to, he used to try to look like. Because <laughs> Essie, old Essie's was black. Mm. Well, those pictures of Moni, I, maybe Mark can... Email Kathleen or something and ask. Oh, oh, she looked at those at Cracker Barrel and said, she looked like a movie star. Yeah, she did. I said, uh, yes. Letty says Joan Crawford. And I, yeah. I said, I remember, though, when I was little, I thought it was Barbara Stanton. And I've always thought Barbara Stanton yeah. myself. But uh, yeah. she she did. She, or it was pretty. She had pretty facial features. Mm-hmm. It always has. Always has. But, well, I guess we better go, baby. We well, just... listen, I will thank God for this. I am in for the day because I froze my butt off mm. and I'm <laughs> going to stay right in this house. Oh, I know y'all know the four stages of life. No. I bet you've got a bunch of them on here. Let's see. About Santa Claus? No. Uh-uh. Four stages of life. Number one. You believe in Santa Claus. Number two, you don't believe in Santa Claus. Three, you are Santa Claus. <laughs> okay. And four, you look like Santa Claus. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the stage I'm in right now. 
<laughs> Only I need a beard to cover up these uh, this turkey neck. <laughs> oh, I think everybody in the family, mother had that, and me too. And all the facials in the world had never picked mine up. Uh uh-uh. uh Of course, I never had. I never did it, but once, about once every six months, facials <laughs> rubbing up, up, up. Yeah. Yeah. All of it went down, down, down. That's right. And the beauty part of it is, I don't worry a bit about it. No. No. Just enjoy your beauty. Enjoy. <laughs> the one thing that we can enjoy is not being in pain. <laughs> That's right. You do you know? I'm telling you, pain is terrible, and I thank yeah. God, I'm not hurting anywhere. Yeah. Yes. Just look around us and see people that are. Oh, yes. So. Are you still going to church on Saturday night? I told Letty, she called me this morning, I told her I wasn't going to try it this evening. Because Alan's coming. And uh, I didn't go last week. But I do love to go over there, Mark. Mm, that's I love so nice. to go over to that church. And just get you a cup of coffee and go in there. Oh, a big old cup. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I told Liddy, I said, you know, I can't help but enjoy that. I come home rested from there. Hmm. You know, Mark, it was just so relaxing. It is. And I said, I come home from Southside, so exhausted, mm. I can't hardly speak to anybody. <laughs> and now, what is the difference? I said, Gene would say it was too much hugging and kissing and going on. <laughs> Use of my arms. See, I don't know yeah. nobody over there. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Lord. But I do love that little church. Yeah. Well, I know the Morrisons enjoyed our visit when we went out. Didn't. And Mark, I let those, you know, Pat said wait on them some potatoes at least two weeks. Yeah. Leave them in that sack. I haven't got to tell them yet. But I forgot them. And I grabbed them out. It was six potatoes. Medium size. They were just as sound as they could be at Thanksgiving. Mm. I washed them good, peeled them, and in Patty Page's cookbook, it told to six potatoes, and that's what that was, and I cooked, baked them in a microwave. Mm-hmm. It just took a few minutes. Yeah. Uh, peel them and cut them lengthwise, quarters, mm-hmm. and a cup. A cup of her Vermont syrup, which it wasn't hers, but Alan had brought me some, two mm-hmm. different kinds, two maple syrup, uh-huh. dark and maple syrup light, and it been in the refrigerator. Okay. I put that cup of uh, syrup, poured that cup, put them in a baking dish, poured, poured that syrup, uh, one cup of maple syrup, and then it said dot with butter. You have never, mm-hmm. ever. That dish was gone <laughs> and nothing flat. And I've got to thank them. Those were the best mm-hmm. sweet potatoes. Well. Ours were good, too. Yeah. But can you feature that I lost them until Thanksgiving <laughs> right when I needed them? Well, it was meant to be. You know, if I'd cooked them here for myself, I, I couldn't have eaten them all. <laughs> but I mean, old James, he may have diabetes, but he enjoyed. Is he still thin? Yeah. Hmm. He really takes care of himself because it scared him. Yeah. Well, he lost a lot of weight. Yeah. He has to take a shot before each meal. Mm. Kathleen said if he hadn't got to that VA, he'd have been dead. Yeah. I wonder if he checks his... Oh, yeah. Sugar. He's real religious about... He does well. Yeah. If you take care of yourself. Yeah, that's right. Well, Mama that's... lived with it. Sophie's living with it. Mm-hmm. Did you hear from her? Yeah. I told me, well, it's about time for me to... I said, well, I knew if one or the other of us didn't call that was in bad shape. Uh, the boy, she just laughed. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's about time for me to be passing around, you know, mm-hmm. sweets. Yeah. She, poor thing, can't eat them. Mm-mm. But she cooks and cooks and cooks and distributes. Mm. Oh, yeah. That's just like Lady does. Mm-hmm. 
but always Mark, with a cake. And let a me tell you something. They don't speak, but if they knew, I would love to tell them that they're just like twins. Their habits, they're happy feeding you. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's a that's a common thread. They always want to bring you something. Mm-hmm. They are just alike and yet don't speak. Oh, was that May like that? She yeah, always... May was like May loved to cook and feed. Hmm. She sure did. And both of them will say, Mama said, did so-and-so, even Sophie. And now that's the way Mama did. Hmm. That's the way Mama did and just alike. <laughs> That's where you come in that blood's thicker than water. Yeah. That's right. if they if they had any idea, which they don't, that they're just alike. <laughs> well, you can't help it sometimes if No, but I I still pray over it. Yeah. Well who's on did anyone get did you share that tape with anyone after you watched it? The I know Jay video there not been nobody here. By themselves? No, and they, it was all, every one of them here Thanksgiving night. Mm -hmm. uh, Craig and uh, I asked Letty, I believe she come Thursday morning, Wednesday morning. I said, did you watch that tape? She said, no, I don't believe. I think it makes them sad. Mm -hmm. I'm sure. People will run just like I don't mention Randy's CD. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't mention that to anybody, anybody. But I couldn't get Letty to say she wanted to watch it. Well, she's missing something. She don't want us, the part she needs to see is the cat in the car washing and the, I the detached retina. I know it. I told her about it. And I said, and you're on there, but Mary Ruth Fart. Yep, yep, yep. She can play a tune down any hour. Yeah. <laughs> Rallin, I guess. But every time he comes to visit, the house fills up. <laughs> and you know, like the video of our party. Mm -hmm. I never got to, Jean got to see that. But they were all here and I was having 10 to 100. Hmm. Yeah. And, 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 and I couldn't absorb it, but I'm no. so glad he did. Yeah. Because he don't let anything disturb him if he's looking at something. <laughs> but he got to see that a short while before he went. So. Yeah. And I love this where uh, Randy says, well, as Grandma says, nothing couldn't have been added. Mm -hmm. I was just eating, and I said, yeah, that was her words. Yeah. <laughs> and Red, uh, he said, Dad, you outdid yourself this time. <laughs> now, he always said that. Yeah. I heard him, Chris, don't you want some more? <laughs> well, that's just like gold to me, son. Yeah. And Jean praying. Yeah. I didn't realize that was on there, too. Oh, well, he'd... It, uh, he was uh, old before he could do that. And I noticed he had one arm crossed holding the other elbow and his ha one hand over his forehead. Uh -huh. And that was his stance. That was the way he did. Hmm. Oh, that's precious to me. Yeah. Well, good. Did, did SCB come and take your freezer? No. SCB come and did I tell you, he said, I had him to sit and watch the barbecue. Uh-uh. Oh, really? Oh, he said, and, and you know, he didn't want to sit down in my living room. Mm. And I said, sit down, Essie. He just drank that in. Didn't I tell y'all? No. And he said, I said, you know, that preacher was supposed to um, let me know about his concert. And he said, he, he, Minnie Lou was supposed to remind him and didn't. And he said, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll bring and hit you a CD. Okay. When he called me the other day, I said, SCB, he said, I told me and Lou about that video. I said, uh, SCB, uh, Charlotte said she gave that pastor $10 for, a, he said, she sure did. <laughs> she sure did. And uh, I said, but she said that she had moved, and if he sent it, she never got it. And he said, I'm going to bring it to you and let you send it. But he said she sure did. Yeah. I don't know if he saw you. Or... I don't know, but um, I don't know. Well, you, it's me. <clears throat> I mean, if we, if he 
Hardy says he's been dying ever since he's known him. So he told me, the SCB told me, said, I, I, he, he come and looked and said he's going to have to have help, Mark. And, uh, well, yeah, I, and then he was supposed to come back on Saturday, and I never heard from him. And I got to thinking, this is too much. And uh, so when he called me to apologize, he said he was sick. Mm-hmm. Um, I said, oh, oh SCB, it's okay. I said, that's a job that can be done after Christmas. Mm-hmm. I said, I realize along with you that that's too much. Mm-hmm. And he said, well, no, I've talked with some people that would like to have the stuff. Mm-hmm. And I said, well, we'll get to that. I don't want to run him off, you know. Yeah. Because this, this is going to be a job. Yeah, yeah. It's a terrific job. 